Here are the best and the worst heroes in the September 13th patch of Deadlock. Starting off with the C tier, there's really only one hero here this patch, and that is McGuinness. She did receive a decent chunk of buffs in the recent patch, but I don't think there's a way where she can apply consistent damage nor utility when compared to the other heroes on the roster. There's a chance we'll see some banger builds out there that takes her to the next level, but I have yet to see it, which is why I can only really put her in the C tier. So let's just hop on over to the B tier. First off, we have Lady Geist. She deals a decent chunk of damage, especially now with the change to her blood shards as of the latest patch, and the ultimate provides for a great way to come back at a health disadvantage and to deal with tanks, but she takes a very long time to get there. And as far as how she plays, she is pretty static movement-wise, and she's pretty easy to counterplay, which is why I feel like she kind of belongs in the B tier. Another hero, almost a fallen hero that now belongs in the B tier, is Wraith. She used to be such a great pick for me, but the very last few patches have indirectly nerfed her gun build, which I believe is the strongest version of Wraith. She does have good mobility, utility, and decent damage, but she just deals less than than ideal damage. So let's head on into the A tier. This is the biggest or largest tier by far, with the heroes loosely ordered from the worst to best. All of these are valid to play with varying levels of viability, depending on your skill level, your lobbies, and so much more, but let's just dive into it. First off, in the A tier, we of course have Pocket. This guy can be absolutely unstoppable in the right hands with an insane amount of mobility on top of a very high amount of burst damage, in addition to an ability that can win entire fights on their own by forcing enemies back to base. I want to say that Pocket its only issue is that unless you get him rolling, then he's gonna be useless. He is the definition of feast or famine, not just because he's a beggar, but because that's just how his kit works. And he doesn't have much of a consistent damage output either, it's all a burst or nothing, but when he works, he works. Which is why I put him in the A tier. Next up, we of course have Bebop. Bebop saw a huge buff this latest patch, and his ultimate is a force to be reckoned with. Now, there was a hot fix bringing him back to speed a little bit, but that doesn't mean that the ultimate isn't nearly unstoppable compared to previously. The double bomb build is as strong as ever, and while yes, you can sort of counter it by building a deep buff remover for the bombs or rescue beam to save hook teammates, it still takes a lot of souls and effort to itemize against him, and these souls could be spent elsewhere. But that's not to mention that his ultimate can beam the hell out of his target or the entire enemy team in one go, so you really gotta be careful if if Bebop gets rolling. The only reason I don't put him in S tier is because he does have a lot of item counters or counters in general that stops him from really shining in every situation. On we of course have Yamato. Yamato has an insane damage burst potential, survivability and utility and can stick onto your squishies like no other, especially when she is fully kitted. She's on the more advanced side when it comes to how she plays, but when she's played right, she's unstoppable. One could argue that she belongs in the S tier, but since she is so challenging to play and much like most dive heroes, she's very much Feast or Famine. I think that the A tier is a fair spot. Also, I went absolutely off in this game in the background. I'm gonna upload a video on that later. Just subscribe, I guess. Now, Viscous is a little bit different because he is very strong with an insanely high skill ceiling, but he's also comparatively easy to play in lane and to harass opponents. Your skill is going to be your limit here, and as you get into the late game, a good Viscous can definitely carry through his ball and his puddle punch and whatever, but the farther you go up into the late game, the more difficult lining up your abilities will be, which is kind of what holds him back from being a convenient all-rounder. And then, moving on, we have Mo and Krill. And man, Mo and Krill have such a high potential, but they are chained to having coordinated teams that follow up on them. The entire kit, when built properly, lets him tear through all the troopers and the jungles and clear the map at a record pace, while also having great presence in all of the lanes in the game. Their knock-up or their ultimate will guarantee a kill in a gank or in a fight, and it's insanely good when there is follow-up. But that's the key word, follow-up. Mo and Kill are great for tanking and securing a kill, especially on your high value targets, but if your teammates don't follow up, then all of this effort is gonna be for nothing. And Paradox... Paradox sort of has the same problem. On her own, she doesn't pack too much of a punch, and unless you're really far ahead, she probably will have a hard time winning most of your duels. But all of her kit is amazing for her team, with her third ability, letting her roam and gank lightning fast, which lets her secure kills with almost no commitment, and her ultimate can lead to absolutely free kills in really any stage of the game, but it comes with a lot of risk, because just like Mo and Krill, you put yourself in the enemy team for a play, and unless your team follows it up, you really just end up trading yourself. As for Lash, this guy has a lot of hyper carry potential, so if you use his kit right, you can easily win in lane and snowball it into the mid or even late game, and any fight can immediately be turned with the right pick or the perfect ultimate. A gold ultimate is practically a free kill or free fight ender on its own. The problem is that he has a very high skill floor, and if you don't know what you are doing, then the huge ult just kind of turns into a huge throw. 
<laughs> pun intended, against certain teams, you might not really see much value from his ultimate since they know how to get out of the way and avoid it. But then we have Warden. Warden hits hard with one of the highest consistent damages in the game. You know, depending on your build, he has an insanely high survivability and a pretty strong pick potential thanks to locking enemies down. Once he's fully built, he will be unstoppable. But the problem with Warden, if there is any, is that he doesn't really have any escapes. You kind of have to all in when he's certified. If you mess it up, you're kind of useless for a little while, which means you will either kill everyone or you're gonna end up killing nobody. Next up, we have Great Talon. This guy can dish out a lot of damage and be an absolute oppressive menace thanks to his abilities both in lane as well as in the mid to late game. And then the Spirit Owl will not only secure kills, but win you entire fights thanks to its huge damage and the stun, which might be enough for an engage for the rest of your team to follow up and then clean up and win. The Owl lets Great Talon have presence across the entire map at any point in the game, which lets him push up lanes or even secure kills on low health targets across the map, which lets him share the wealth with the rest of the team as well. But he is very reliant on positioning because he is squishy and if he's caught, he's pretty much dead. Finally, to close out the A tier, we have Haze. She's probably the golden child of the A tier and you can make an argument that she might belong in the S tier, but to me, she seems like a hero that not only sort of feast or famine, but if she's getting focused a lot or properly and is somewhat itemized against, then she really doesn't make that much of a dent whether she has 20,000 souls or 50. She is still very strong and can really only be shut down by the most focused of players or teams, which is why she's at the top of the A tier, but still only A tier. And finally, in the S tier, we have heroes that are pretty damn good, but usually have one thing that makes them stand out from the rest. First off, that's gonna be Abrams. I was debating whether he belongs in the A tier or in the S tier, but the sheer survivability, the damage output, and the value you can get from both his stun and his ultimate puts him a cut above the rest. Winning the lane is incredibly easy, and he can both be the initiator or the follow-up on another initiator to secure any kills at any point in the game. He's as simple as any hero could be with the highest possible payoff. After that, there is Ivy. Ivy has a great set of abilities. She can either play as a support or a huge damage dealer with a ton of value through every single ability, but especially her stun and especially her ultimate. In my opinion, the ultimate on its own is what puts her in the S tier. She can use it to roam, to gank, to initiate fights, to save herself or teammates to get out of trouble, and even run herself or a teammate with the soul urn to the other side in record pace. Not to mention the value that you get out of a well-placed tier 3 bomb. The map presence you get from her ultimate might actually be unmatched. After that, there is Vindicta. Now, previously, I would probably put her in the A tier since she struggles as the game goes on, but her laning phase and early to mid game might just be unmatched with an insane snowball potential thanks to her ultimate, which can let her gank other lanes with minimal investment and secure free kills with almost no effort. But now, as of the latest patch, her sniper rifle now deals additional damage or headshots. And even better, it also shares the additional souls per kill that you would get with anyone who gets an assist. Some might see this as a nerf since Vindicta gets less money, but I see it as a buff since the shared souls will go to more members of the team, which improves the whole team's economy as a whole, rather than just Vindicta's own, which is going to be especially useful as the game progresses, because enemies will start focusing Vindicta, and at that point, it is better that her teammates can pick up the slack as well. And then, let's talk about Shiv. I've had it up to here with Shiv by now. When built the right way, he can deal an insane amount of damage, and in the laning phase, once he gets his ultimate, he can practically roll his face against the keyboard and score a double kill once you unlock the ultimate and start getting rage. So even if Shiv is severely behind in kills and assaults, the advantage that he gets with the rage is a massive power spike and can very easily tip the scales back in his favor. It's up to the Shiv to snowball this laning phase into a successful early to mid game as he shines the most with a huge lead. But compared to the heroes on the lower end of this tier list, it's easier for him to get there and easier for him to maintain thanks to the sheer damage output and the survivability of his abilities. Next up is Kelvin. Kelvin saw a substantial nerf this patch, especially with his ultimate no longer granting free kills on any objective such as the towers, the mid boss, or even the patron, but that doesn't mean that he still doesn't have any uses. And that's not to mention the rest of his kit. A healing and slowing grenade, a slowing death ray, a flying ability that leaves a path for his team as well. Everything in Kelvin's kit is strong. Even post nerf, he has to be one of the best heroes, if not the best hero in the game, if we're talking support. After that, let's talk Dynamo. Dynamo
Primo saw a marginal nerf in the latest patch, but it doesn't really make that much of a dent in his kit overall. Every ability of his is valuable for himself and for his team, and every ability makes a huge difference between the knock up and increase damage from his first, get out of jail free card and increase firing speed for him and any nearby teammates for a second, the speed boost and heal from his third, or the fight deciding ultimate. There isn't really any ability that doesn't let Dynamo carry the hell out of his team, either as a support or as a damage dealer. And of course, we can't have an S tier without talking about Infernus. Infernus actually saw a tiny buff last patch. It was nothing substantial, just a little bit of an improved slow resistance during his charge, but he's so damn good in sustained fights. If a fight lasts long enough for him to start putting his passive down on one or on many enemies, then he will be completely completely unkillable. Like, I'm not even kidding. He's also dealing insane amounts of damage while doing so. Not to mention the value you can get from a well-placed ultimate that can completely turn the tide of a fight or just secure any fight that you get into if you use it right. And of course, finally, before running off the tail list with the last hero in this tier, if you guys enjoy the video so far, make sure that you have subscribed to the channel. If it's already done, sweet. I appreciate that. You guys are awesome. But the last hero in this list and potentially the best hero in the game might just be Seven. Seven hits hard. His kit lets him be oppressive in lane, and with the right build, he can roam around incredibly fast while clearing out all the jungles, which lets him get even more souls to snowball his primary fire, as well as his third ability, and of course, eventually his ultimate. No matter whether to lean into the primary fire or ultimate, he still deals so much damage in any team fight he gets into, and yes, in the lower elos, his ultimate will be stronger, and it will be less viable as you go up the elo or MMR, but that's when his primary fire and second and third ability start to really shine. So he's really covered on all the skill levels. He deals so much damage in any team fights he gets into, and he's just an absolute powerhouse, pun very much intended, while doing so. His presence in any team fights might be unrivaled, and if he isn't dealt with, then he can wipe entire teams on his own. And again, it's easy to get there thanks to the fast jungle and lane clear. But yeah, that is the tier list for this patch. Obviously, the value of every hero might look different across every skill level, but I think that this should cover most levels of play and give you an idea of what to play. And also, seeing as metas change as things are discovered in between patches, I've now decided to to release my live tier list, which I personally kind of tinker with occasionally just to make sure it's accurate for any upcoming videos available for all Patreon subscribers over at patreon.com slash otter. We're going to continue doing tier list videos every patch or so where it's relevant, but any small changes will reflect in the live tier list instantly. Patrons also get early access to scripts, free videos, shout outs, again, thanks to Sergeant Pyroman and SC7639 for subscribing and so much more. But as usual, I'm curious to hear what you guys think. And if you guys want to get even better at deadlock, click the video on the screen. Thank you for watching and see you all next time. Peace out.